do you believe and therefore act out the proposition that slavery and tyranny is wrong? And if the answer to that is yes, well, congratulations to you because at least in principle, you're being guided by the spirit that pulls people out of slavery and that, and that opposes tyranny. And we might say, well, that's good in some transcendent sense. And then we might say that God is the sum total of all things that are good in some transcendent sense. And that's not a matter of mere belief in a factual proposition. It's more a matter of what are you willing to stake your life on? And that's a more accurate representation of what you believe than what you say about the facts that you regard as valid. And so the stories that are accumulated in the biblical corpus, which is a library, by the way, and not a book, seem to do something like attempt an approximation at representing that highest, the highest spirit to be mimicked. That's the same as celebrated or worshiped, by the way, technically speaking. And then to say, well, it's a multidimensional spirit. It's complex. And so you can't encapsulate its full complexity in a single narrative. So the God of the Old Testament, for example, is not only the voice that calls the enslaved to freedom and, and, and the voice of that which we regard as as what would you say, speaking self-evident truth, like the notion that slavery is in itself wrong and, and that tyranny is also. Even though that's a very fundamental claim and a very important claim and a, and a primary moral claim, it's, it's not enough to flesh out the full nature of this transcendent spirit that should, in principle, guide us. And so... Other stories have aggregated around it. And so, for example, in the story of Cain and Abel, the patriarchal spirit, let's say, the spirit of logos and masculinity is represented as the voice that calls you from your conscience to indicate when your sacrifices are of insufficient quality. And then you say, well, do you believe in that spirit? The answer is, well, do you believe that your conscience speaks to you. Do you believe that you, should by ab ab that you should abide by its dictates? Now, you know, no one can say that. They do that perfectly because you'd be a saint if you managed that, but it's a very rare person and perhaps one that you should do everything you possibly can to avoid who will say to you, whatever my conscience tells me, I ensure I do the opposite. And so then you think, well, you only have three choices in relationship to the voice of your conscience. You can either abide by it, or you can ignore it, or you can oppose it, and those are all acts of faith and belief. And there's no way out of that, what tripart conundrum, those are the options. And it, it's not also something that you can do merely as a consequence of evaluating the evidence, because you actually don't know what will happen if you listen to your conscience, nor do you know what will happen if you don't, nor do you know what will happen if you ignore it. You can make guesses, and those guesses in and of themselves are predicated in something like faith in the propositions that guide the guesses, and so you're stuck with the decision of faith in relationship to your own conscience, and that's that. And so you see in the story of Cain and Abel that in, in some sense, what God is, is portrayed as the spirit of conscience that calls you on your malfeasance.